So how do these increased interest rates affect a buyer's payment? So that's a good question. Obviously, they will be higher. What we are advising people is we do think this is a short cycle. You've seen cycles. I've seen cycles. Mm -hmm. What goes up must come down. Uh, and this is an inflationary situation. It's not uh, something that we think will be permanent. So we're advising people you have two options to kind of mitigate cost or payment because that's okay. what's important to people, right? They right. want to know what am I paying and what do I bring to closing? Correct. When I buy a house, how Correct. much does it cost me to move in and then what do I pay every month? So don't put, I wouldn't invest money into your interest rate right now. Okay. I'm advising against that okay. because the interest rates are going to come back to us in the next couple of years, right? Um, so if you're buying a house that's only been on the market a day, you know, you're there's still low inventory. It's catching mm -hmm. up, but buyers are still having to compete. Mm -hmm. um, my suggestion is take whatever rate is available that day, move on, minimize your cost of entry because cash is what you need right now. Sure. Uh, your costs for the first year of home ownership are higher than any. Mm -hmm. um, and then the second option that I would say is the temporary buy down. If you find a home that's been sitting maybe 10, 15 days, Instead of asking for a reduction, uh, or if you're a listing agent, instead of reducing the price, you could offer a temporary paid buy down. Okay, it's oftentimes cheaper than whatever you would reduce your price by, and it can save the buyer two percent off of their rate for year one, wow. and one percent off their rate year two. Okay, uh, and in some scenarios, that four hundred to five hundred thousand, uh, that can be almost five hundred a month year one. Huge savings. That's a big savings. Um, and it costs about two and a half percent from the seller. Um, of the loan amount? Of, of the loan amount. Okay. So it's not, if they're putting money down, it's even less. It's not the sales price, it's okay. the loan amount. Uh, it costs about 2.5, 2 2.6%. But what the buyer gets is an extremely competitive rate for the next two years. And then we're going to come right behind them and refinance that. Okay. And the seller will most likely save over what they would have potentially reduced the house. And does the seller have to pay that, or I guess it would only make sense for the seller to pay that for it yeah, to be a, a benefit to the buyer? Right. It's pretty much a dollar for dollar savings, so it doesn't make a lot of sense for a buyer to pay it. Okay. But even if the seller participates fifty percent, sure, it makes sense for the buyer to pay the rest because okay. they're going to they're going to save so much money over okay. the, over the first two years. Okay. Um, but that's that's a couple of ways that we're offering advice, like in this environment. Obviously, a lot of the home buyers that are entering the market right now have never seen a rate above a three. Sure. Uh, so they don't really know what to do. Um, so if we can get them something that's 2% lower than market, that's attractive to them. And it may even get some buyers that have put themselves on the sideline back active again. Correct. So we've had some really good traction with it. That's awesome. So that sounds like a great product for buyers agents or listing agents, yeah. either one. It can be used either way. So you feel pretty confident in two years interest rates will be back. I do, um, because this we are reaping what we sowed right now mm -hmm. from economic policy. You print too much money and you keep things too cheap, mm -hmm. um, prices are going to go up. Okay. If you buy everything and there's no wood, there's no steel, there's no anything, you have to charge more for what you do have to sure. buy for because you have to keep revenue coming in. Right. Um, so this is just inflation 101. So they're going to continue to raise rates until we curb that inflation. Um, I think housing is still safe because this isn't like bad loans yeah. or bad uh, properties. It's a different recession than 2008. Absolutely. This is just a normal like, hey, we had some inflation. We had some bad policies. We're going to fix them uh, or at least curb them and then things will come back down. It's going to get rough for a few months, right? And you got to have a recession proof business sure even that would even be great to negotiate during the option period during okay. inspections instead yeah. of asking for repairs get that payment down mm -hmm. and take advantage of that especially for people that can take care of some repairs on their own that's a great negotiating point absolutely and, and someone that's seasoned like yourself you know what's going to show up on an appraisal report absolutely. if it's if it's cosmetic stuff that's not necessarily going to affect the value mm -hmm. maybe it is a way to yeah. negotiate that buy down. Um, but I will tell you, most of the examples we run up to about, you know, think about a $400,000 deal, two and a half percent is 10 grand, right? Mm -hmm. Your average HAR reduction on 400,000 is 10,000 or more. At least, right, so to make a difference. You're gonna, if you've got four in the neighborhood mm -hmm. and everybody's been on the market two weeks, instead of going to 390, which only saves the buyer $80 a month, that doesn't move the needle. Right. If you did this, probably save you about 800 bucks total, 
and the buyer saving three, four hundred a month. That's, All of a sudden, mm -hmm. you're the most attractive house on the block. Yeah, that's priceless. That's awesome. Uh, not everybody will be able to offer it. Not every lender will be able to offer it, but we won't be the only ones. But it is a very effective tool, and it's a very old solution to a very new problem. Sure. Uh, and it only fits this market because of the time frame. Okay. It just works right now because we, economically, we know it's coming back to us. But here's the thing: if we're if every economic person is wrong, I'm wrong, everyone's wrong, right? Okay. And they go higher. You still have the same fixed rate at six whatever the today is correct right so you're protected against if it continues to run away from us too sure so and at that yeah. point you'll be happy yes yes i mean it, it allows the people that are having to pull back to go ahead and move forward on yeah. the house because what it isn't is an adjustable rate mortgage sure. it's a fixed rate mortgage for 30 years that you just get a temporary reduction temporary. so that you can ease into that mortgage payment. gotcha uh, let me ask i at, at the christian Buck team we have some newer agents mm -hmm. And when I'm, I'm talking and teaching newer agents, what would you say a good rule of thumb is for how they can figure closing costs on an escrow but with a client that is doing escrow? Um, if they're, if they're going to get a seller contribution for just closing costs or they're wanting to give them, with, no, there's not a lot of seller contributions going sure. on right now. However, they want to give them on their first face-to-face -face and say, on conventional, your closing costs will be about, and on FHA, your closing costs would be approximately. Right. So the escrows is the main variable, right? We know conventional is going to be 2%-ish in FHA, VA. Actually, FHA will be maybe a little bit more expensive. Mm -hmm. VA is probably in line with conventional. Okay. In our state, because we have high state property taxes, mm -hmm. right? Our property taxes are high. We have municipality districts. We have all these other things that can go into, you know, this street can be $1,000 a year less than this street. That part's very hard to do. Um, but basically, if you're buying from someone that, you know, isn't over 65 and has the uh, over 65 exemption, mm -hmm. you can add in about three months of insurance and three months of taxes okay. because the seller's going to give you a credit back for the time they live there. So between what we're going to set up and what they're going to credit you, mm -hmm. it's about three months of each okay. as a general rule. So you put that with the two or three percent, you can come up with a pretty good number. Okay, that's so it's good. not easy, easy, but it's not. It doesn't have to be as difficult as people think. Yeah, it's not impossible to figure okay. out. Yeah. Okay, so um, a couple of other questions that I think we we get a lot is in this time, how can we help or you help us um, with our offer standing out? standing apart mm -hmm. especially under 280 mm -hmm. there are still 10 12 offers yes. so talk to me a little bit about if my agents go with fairway of course. what is it that when that listing agent receives our offer that y'all are going to do on your end to help us stand apart from the rest of the offers absolutely so part of it is kind of what you experience too um, reputation is everything we've built a, a very good one in the community and I think people like it when one of our offers is in the stack but that's not everything mm -hmm. so on top of that we try to make them more competitive by taking our pre-approvals a step further we can take the borrowers all the way to clear to close minus finding a house okay. where you could erase that financing contingency even on a financed offer we have the ability to do a cash backup offer at no cost mm -hmm. to your buyer no one else is doing that um, so that if we don't close, uh, Fairway will purchase the house. That's okay. something that no one else is doing for free. Okay. Uh, and then we have partnerships with other companies that will allow them to buy before they sell if they have a contingency issue. Okay. So depending on what is the needed solution mm -hmm. to make a seller find that more attractive, we have it. It's just a matter of what is their specific situation. Um, the only reason that we continue to um, in this year be level or even right now we're 0.4% growth for this year a lot of people are not in that position it's because it doesn't matter what this market does mm -hmm. we have the correct tool that's awesome like if you have the answer for whatever the problem is mm -hmm. you're gonna be able to survive in all the markets and um, that's why I'm happy to kind of be where we are that's and awesome. I think that's what makes us a good partner Absolutely, and we're right. not super flashy mm -hmm. uh, we're not uh, big on you know look how much we did or look at this or look at that um, 
But what we do is we make up for it in service and value to our partners. That's wonderful. Yeah, y'all y'all offered us some amazing tools. So when my agents have somebody in new home construction, sure. um, I know that nine times out of ten it just works to go with the, the inside lender of the builder. However, I always have them compare. Sure. Is there anything that you feel like Fairway has that helps us um, have an advantage of using Fairway over the inside lender? Sure. Yeah. I you know, with those situations it really depends on where's the money coming from for the incentive. Right? Correct. If it's in the sale of the home, hard to beat. It just depends on how much money they're giving them. Mm-hmm. Um, but what I would ask them is how much, how important is it to know what your rate's going to be? What is that worth to you? If they're giving you $4,000, is that enough money for you to not potentially know what your rate will be at closing? Sure. And what I mean by that is we have extended rate lock programs up to 365 days. Okay. Wow. I know that construction was taking a little longer. Mm-hmm. It's starting to speed up a little bit, mm-hmm. but being able to lock a rate for a year in a rising rate environment is not something that everyone can do. You can couple that also with the buy down, the temporary buy down, and within 30 days, if the market's corrected in your favor, we give you a free float down to whatever the market is. So you have protection on the top side. Okay. We're going to give you the lowest rate available within 30 days, and we can pair it with the buy down. Is there a cost to do the lock this far in advance? So we charge um, a 1% fee to lock it, but it is credited to them at closing. Okay, so there's really... Correct. There's really it's like money. giving extra earnest money, mm-hmm. maybe, mm-hmm. just to keep that rate. Um, and that's non-refundable with digital That's non-refundable. Costs, I assume. That's non-refundable, mm-hmm. unless the builder moves them to another contract. Okay. Because in that scenario, we're going to cancel that lock but we wouldn't make them pay again. We would just give them a new extended lock okay. at whatever the market rate is. How long, speaking of lock, how long is a lock good for? So standard... When, and when can you lock? Sure, so that's a two-parter. So t- traditionally, when you lock an interest rate, you have a contract in your hand mm-hmm. and uh, it's signed by all parties. And when we do those initial disclosures, which starts that eight day window that you can't close before that, right? Seven, eight days. You could lock that day. Okay. That's the first day, traditionally. Okay. Every market's different. So we have the ability to lock while you're shopping. So we could lock you, if we had you pre approved, mm-hmm. we could lock you for a 60 day window while you find a house. Okay. okay? So that would be your insurance policy. Mm-hmm. Rate will never be higher than this. But if the rates are lower, when you find your house, we give you the better rate. So we give you that too. And we can pair that with the buy downs too. Okay. So you can use those for resales. To do that, there's no cost for the lock, shop, and go. Okay. It is free. Now, if you do the temporary buy down, like we talked about before, that's a negotiation piece with the seller. Okay. But you can put those two together. So you're hedged against inflation on rates, Mm -hmm. right? Which we know the Fed's going to continue to raise, Mm -hmm. which does not directly affect mortgage rates, but when we see that CPI report, which is Consumer Price Index report come out, if it's higher than 8.6 in July, Mm -hmm. they're going to raise rates and interest rates will go up again, period, because that means we have not curbed inflation at all. So we're looking at middle of July as the next big, big meeting. All the stuff in between moves the needle very little. Okay. But if they get that report back and it says we're 8.6 still, that means all of this bed work has done nothing okay. to inflation. Right? Okay. So middle of July, we'll know better. Okay. But if you're in a lock, shop, and go program or an extended rate lock, doesn't matter what happens in July. Okay. You have a no higher than rate, and then you have the ability to get the lower okay. one if the market comes back to you. Okay, and if you just lock and closing keeps getting extended, just say I went under contract today and we lock, and then closing keeps getting extended, how long is the original lock good for? A a standard lock is 30 days, okay? Okay. And then the extension policy depends on whatever lender you're working with. Most lenders will do at a minimum an additional 30 days. Um, We can do it, I won't say perpetually, but I mean we can do pretty long extension. Mm -hmm. At some point it makes sense to what they call bust out your lock, Mm -hmm. which means I'm out of that lock, I'm waiting, I know the delay is more than 60 days, so then you just relock so you don't have all the fees. 
at the end of 60 days. And so since we have the different hedging options with the extended rate lock and all these other things, you're pretty well protected. Um, so it just depends. But we can extend these locks. Okay. And a know. cost to the buyer? There is a cost to the buyer. Once you're locked and you've set your term, mm -hmm. anything past that does have a cost to the buyer. Mm -hmm. And right now, with the uncertainty in the market, it's more expensive than it has been previously. Okay. So, so if we did a 45-day lock, yeah. that's going to cost the buyer even if it's done up front? It will cost them less if it's done up front because then we already know we're securing funds for 45 days. Once you do a 30-day lock and then you start telling them, I need more time, they don't know how much time you need. So that's more costly. Does that make sense? Because sure. they're building in risk there. Mm -hmm. But up front, if you say, I need 45, 60 days, whatever it is, um, the risk is already priced in at a much lower rate. Okay. Okay, I think that covers our questions. Okay. Um, so I'll ask the question a little differently, but it'll be kind of the same thing. So we both lead teams. Yes. Right? Yes. Um, you know, besides our, our faith and our family, it's probably our most important thing. Absolutely. So what makes Christy Buck step out of selling homes and say, I'm going to start a team or a brokerage or, or whatever? And it could have been different what you thought day one you were going to yes. do versus yeah. what it is today. I know mine is. Absolutely. So what is that moment in time that makes you go, nope, I'm doing, I'm doing this instead? So for me, growing a team was um, buying back some work-life balance mm -hmm. in the beginning, feeling like I um, want to do more, make more, um, achieve more, but it's there's so many hours in a day. Um, I can't change time. I can only change what I do with my time. Mm -hmm. So the only way to have more um, is, is to leverage the time and leverage people. So it was initially to have more time being a mom, and I was always there at everything, but I was never present. Mm -hmm. So my initial goal was to have work-life balance, sure. and then that quickly um, I, that was accomplished. Um, and then, like you said, things changed. I learned, I hired a business coach, mm -hmm. and I knew how to be a great realtor, but I didn't know how to run a great business. Sure. And I spent, I've spent 10 years in coaching now, and have become a coach. Um, however, it, my why changes all the time. Sure. So that was the initial reason. And now uh, I had limited beliefs. I didn't know I could build something as a realtor that would allow me to sell it. Mm -hmm. I just thought when you finish being a realtor, you fade out and quit doing transactions. Someone else does the transactions you were doing. Correct. Right? That's the end of yes. it. Yes. Not yeah. that I could build a book of business to mm -hmm. say, here's the value of this business. Here's what it's produced um, for all of these years. And I will hand the baton off to the next person and um, just build, building a very well-oiled machine mm -hmm. um, that creates value. Mm -hmm. So when I think about, mine's similar, <clears throat> and I'll get into that too, but whenever I think about my exit strategy and secession plan, mm -hmm. right, because that's something that I talk about with my coach too, mm -hmm. um, the first five years is still an advisor, yeah. and then I don't know if I can ever completely quit working. Same. Because I really love it. Same. But I think that you can start doing what you really like a lot more mm -hmm. and leverage the things that you just have to do, right. right? Because now it's someone else's business or bottom line, you're the advisor right. or you're on the board. Um, so mine is similar. What made me go out and start this group is I was with a group of people that I think we all had good intentions in 2010 mm -hmm. when we set out. Mm -hmm. By 16, that had changed. It was pretty evident for about a year. Um, I always wanted to grow, you know, doesn't matter, people, business, whatever, mm -hmm. grow it, scale it. Uh, I was not in production. Mm -hmm. I was only in operations. And one day, I walked through the halls of our office and everyone there looked miserable. And I went home and told my wife, I think I have to quit. And 
at the time we were doing well and she said you're gonna have to unpack that a little bit for me because mm-hmm. uh, this uh, tell me more right and I said well I just can't keep going to work and being one of the only people in a good mood mm-hmm. right I am disappointed in myself that I've been a part of something that has allowed anyone to feel that way and I wanted to grow in a different way not just profit mm-hmm. so uh, hadn't done alone in, in eight years um, didn't know any realtors and you know me and my wife just kind of thought about it prayed about it and I came in that next Monday and quit Wow! and one of the last things that one of those people said to me was you know you haven't done any loans you don't know any realtors not gonna work and I just remember thinking I'm gonna keep I'm gonna keep that with me um, and every once in a while when I'm like man I'm a little tired this week you know I think about that and I'm like, nope, got to keep pushing because now, uh, same thing, right? Had to get a business coach. I know how to, I knew how to manufacture loans. I didn't know how to get them. I didn't know how to go market, didn't know how to do any of that. Um, It was me and my wife were the two employees for the first week. That was it. Wow. Some of those people came also because they were like, hey, we want a breath of fresh air too. Mm -hmm. Um, But having to learn everything. You know, and now I'm a coach too. I think that's the progression, right? If you really are in it to build people too. Change lives. Y- yes, mm-hmm. you become the coach too, and you have to. Yes. Um, but going from production, or even in my case, operations, to being pushed forward into leadership mm-hmm. is probably the single hardest thing I've ever had to do. But now it's probably the single thing I'm most proud of outside of my family or faith because it's 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 so much bigger than what I had ever thought yes you know it was this small set of principles that we're going to build this amazing place for people to come do their work and then hopefully people will be attracted to it and now it has its own life it has its own culture there's nothing that I could ever show my kids to be more proud of than the work that I put into that and then what it's become, right? But it's uh, it's theirs now, it's not mm-hmm. mine. Mm-hmm. And that's one of the coolest things yeah. I think that could ever happen to someone. Absolutely, uh, very similar, same situation. I started out with one buyer's agent and then had to get a second and then it grew and grew. And then, you know, I built it on core values. Mm-hmm. What are the core values? What's our culture? That's what we hire by, that's what we release by. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, it's really easy when you have core values that you truly live by. And when somebody's venturing off, yeah. that talk doesn't work. Yeah. And, and you can go down that list of core values and say yes or no. If there's a few no's, they no longer fit into sure. our family, yeah. our work family. And it is so impactful when we have company events. I'm big on culture. Mm-hmm. So we do things every few weeks as a company. Some are with spouses and kids. Some are just with, with employees and um, agents. And to just stand back and see how many lives have been touched by my choice to continue to grow. Of course. Is impactful. Absolutely. That all of these people have a, a different, a better an opportunity that who knows where they would have been. And I've taken so many younger ones out of that are my kids' friends and helped them become agents and helped develop them into, they weren't college material. They Mm -hmm. didn't want to go off for four years, but they didn't know what they wanted to do. But I saw great things in them. And it's okay that everybody's not, you know, cut out just to go get a bachelor's degree or a master's degree but they're good people with good intentions and good work ethic Mm -hmm. and a degree doesn't always replace those things oh 100 percent. so yes it's 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 been very rewarding yeah i i mean it's it's a very similar trajectory um so building a business while you're raising kids we both did it um they're always watching they're always paying attention Mm -hmm. and my kids are getting older now your kids are uh, getting older now to where they've formed their opinions of how we did things sure and they formed their opinions of did we show up while we were building this business Mm -hmm. and the single most important thing to me was never missing anything 
that's when you talked about leverage. But they are always paying attention. Every time I'm on a call, anytime they're here in this office, anytime they're around and they see me doing business in any way, mm -hmm. they're paying attention. Right. They're listening. And that part of your character means so much when they get to see it. Mm -hmm. Because they don't see it all the time. But when they do, you you can only be yourself and that has to be real because they'll call you out oh, faster yes. than anyone. Yeah. Like, what do you sound like that for? Or why'd you make that? Who, who was that? That isn't like, if you do something, they'll, they'll be the first to be like that. That's, what was that? You yeah. know what I mean? Absolutely. Um, so, you know, I think that that was a pretty cool part of it. Um, and, then the, and then the other thing I was gonna say is, you know, I have a daughter that's a sophomore now at A&M. Wow. And my son is going into ninth grade. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if he's going to go to college. Uh, but he's very, he has a very entrepreneurial spirit. Mm -hmm. So I don't worry about him. Right. right. He knows how to make money. He knows how to do, he knows he'll, he'll be fine. Um, but I did teach him, like you alluded to earlier, you either have to create something to make money mm -hmm. or you have to learn a skill with your mind or your hands that someone will pay you to do. So I don't care what you do, I don't care if you go to college, I don't care you know, what path you choose as long as you can check one of those boxes right. so that I can know that I did my last thing as a parent before I sent you off to try to figure this out, mm -hmm. that you have a way to provide for yourself. My daughter is going to get a degree and work somewhere. Mm -hmm. uh, he won't, so I'm trying to teach him that. Yeah, and because that's a, I, I, I say that's okay. It is okay. Right. There's nothing wrong with that. Because we need skilled workers mm -hmm. in everything. Mm -hmm. Everything. And they're highly trained people, make a lot of money. Yeah, I have, as you know, two sons. One is a mechanic at the Port of Houston, and one is a loan officer with you. I mean, they are as different. Their best friends but it's different and I remember when he came back from Berlin with plans to go to A&M after one year and said this isn't for me mom and I spun out you know because I didn't have the opportunity to go to college so I had to figure it out yeah. and raise two kids alone single so I'm I'm and he said mom and he is very smart he said mom I have a question did you have your whole life figured out at 19 I said, no, but I didn't have the opportunity you have. Yeah. He said, Mom, I'll figure it out. Yeah. And, you know, he did. He did great. Immediately, he just went straight into a trade school. And he, you know, he does amazing for his wife to stay home with his child. Yeah. And he's, that's what he is. He's, he's a mechanic. And I'm just as proud of one as the other because they're true to their talents and who they are and what they want to do. Absolutely. I don't know what your goals are, but I think a missed one a lot is um, time management and, mm -hmm. and a lot of people's lives and your freedom and our freedom mm -hmm. is how we expect, like we said a minute ago, expect to, that we wake up every day unemployed. Of we course. have to make the decision to seek employment forever or maybe, you know, that, that we have to be very intentional when you do I yeah. don't know if that is what I, you're looking for. I, well, yeah, I mean, we can touch on that because uh, when you look at mortgage lending, right, I mean, we want to build lasting relationships with our partners. Mm -hmm. But in the beginning, you have to kind of play a numbers game. Mm -hmm. So historically, if you can get one application a day, you can make six figures a year. One. Mm -hmm. So out of eight billion people in the world, you got to get one person to let you run a credit application to potentially buy a home, which is everyone's goal. Mm -hmm. Yet, so many people lay their heads down every night without getting one. Even though that's literally the formula to make 100,000 plus. You gotta convince one person to trust you to try to help them become a homeowner. One, right. one a day, but they won't do it. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. It is amazing. It's amazing to me the tools that we provide people to be successful and that they don't pick up the toolbox. But the ones that get it, Christy, get you it. tell them that and they're like, I'm going to get two. 
Yeah. I'm, I'll tell you when I'll come back in your office when I have two. Mm -hmm. And 1 p.m. they're like two. And then there's days where you're leaving at six and they're like, I'm still trying to get two. Yeah, I'm not leaving till I, I have one. Yeah. You know, and we all went through that in the beginning, right? Because yeah. you're building. Yeah, and you're, it's overload. Yes. Information overload. 100%. You can't even chase an application. You're trying to learn what you're even talking about. But yes, I think so many people in our industry do not treat it like a job. Yeah. And it's a vocation. Time. It's that they wait for something to fall in their lap. And jobs don't knock on your door and fall in your lap. You have to go wake up every day and employ the hustle. We do what we call 61 points of rhythm for okay. everyone in our team every day. And the one, the 61, the one comes from one more thing, one more time before they walk out the door. Sure. Is do one extra thing when you think you're done. Yep. And I think that, you it's know. An exponent. That's an exponential um, addition. Correct. Because you're doing it every single day. That's right. For your whole career. And like I tell people, if you were <clears throat> unemployed, would you look for a job, the minimum of one hour a day that we require? No. If you were truly unemployed, yeah. would you just get up every day and from nine to 10 look for a job and then hang out the rest of the day? It's the same thing. You are unemployed when you wake up every day. I like to put a 30 day closing in three 10 day increments. The first, oh, well, that's just getting to closing. But when you get a phone call and you have a conversation, you might get an interview. If you get an appointment, which for y'all, I guess, would be an application, sure. for us, it's a face-to-face, -face, uh -huh. then you are maybe getting a working interview. If you get them under contract, now you're on probation sure. to see if you're going to get paid or not get paid, yep. right? So, or if you're going to keep this job. So it's it's being intentional even once you get them under contract. Are you going to, are you going to get them to closing? Are you going to pay attention to everything to make sure your I's are dotted, T's are crossed, mm -hmm. and you're communicating and doing what you need to be doing? Or did you just do a working interview and you're not never going to get paid for it? Yeah, and then you don't know why they don't call you back. Correct. Or why am I not converting? Mm -hmm. When, as a coach, you can look at, okay, this activity is correct, this conversion is not. Mm -hmm. Here's your problem. Here's your follow-up. Correct. correct. It's always the follow-up. Mm -hmm. It's always the follow-up. Always. Um, I had one other thing I was going to say. So back to time management, mm -hmm. right? There are people that are running much larger organizations than us, right? And maybe they're working more hours, mm -hmm. but maybe it helps someone. Maybe it doesn't. This is not. This is from a humble place for me. But I want other people to understand that you can have all those things and still have a life. So right, currently, right now, we have six branches, mm -hmm. 110 people. I own two or three other companies. My son's very active in his basketball. I have a wife of 20 years I love very dearly. My, my daughter is only here every other weekend, mm -hmm. so I'm gonna spend every second with her that I can when she's sure. here. And I average about a 45 hour work week. I also, I, I average about a 45 hour work week. Cool. And last year I originated over 214 mortgages on my team. So it doesn't matter where you're at right now. Mm -hmm. You can have every single thing you want as long as you're willing to work for it. Correct. And a lot of that takes, we have amazing people. I can't do anything without every single one of those people. Yeah. But when you talked about culture and hiring, mm -hmm. I've probably missed on five people mm -hmm. in this process. Because we have a pretty high, it's, I mean, it's a high standard, right? So I've, I've missed four or five times. But let me tell you what happens every single time I miss, okay? Within about two weeks, okay. I will get no less than 10 people call me and ask me, hey, what's the deal here? Right. What happened? How could you have missed mm -hmm. so much on this person? And it's because you can come into an interview and you might be able to fake me out. Mm -hmm. for 45 minutes mm -hmm. but you can't come day one and be someone you're not for Correct. the rest of the time you work here Correct. and that's the same in everything in business yeah. you have to be who you are from day one and the people that want to work with you will be attracted to that mm -hmm. but if you try to be this chameleon that is four percent attractive to everyone yeah. you get no business exactly none 
Agreed. I only want to work with people that understand that my genuine why is to find people and create a better life for them, whether it's through transactions, a job, or through our charitable work. That's it. And if you fit into that, let's work together. Sure. If you are a partner of mine and you don't share those same values, I will find a replacement mm -hmm. to work with you. Mm -hmm. But I need people all in on all of those levels. Yeah, same. I mean, we, we have a very slow hiring process. It's very thorough hiring process. All the way down to what you said now, we do working interviews. They, they need to take off a day from wherever they work and sit beside whatever position they're taking and demonstrate the skill set that they've promised, demonstrate, they can't do all of our systems and processes, yeah. but when we've made some bad hires, I mean, there's some things we can't see, you know, uh, if they're cancer in the team or things like that, sure. so we get to know them. Um, but yes, we, we, are very, we call it slow to hire. Quick to fire. Quick to fire. Got to do yes. it. Gotta do it. Because if you don't, you're not protecting your team. Correct. You're not standing by your word. Mm -hmm. and then if your runs quick. If your values are X, Y, Z, and they're breaking those on a daily basis, mm -hmm. and you do nothing, you risk everyone. Everyone. Yeah. And I think people, I think some people that have a scarcity mindset are um, scared to let people go because they produce. I've Absolutely. let great producers go. Me too. It was a hard, hard. It was a hard difficult decision but then when you go down your core values and say yes or no it's a simple decision but when you start focusing on the wrong thing mm -hmm. which is money money mm -hmm. um, it was tough 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 um, and then one day my coach said you have till five o'clock yeah I was like, okay you're right and we we will survive we didn't we didn't even go backwards yeah but for two years I made a terrible decision and held on and thinking, you know, I've, I've allowed one person to carry too much in, sure. in the company, but it, it doesn't have to be. So we have to we have to keep in the whole culture changed the minute that we change. Well, that's what I was going to say. Any time that I've had those similar situations where you're having to be quick to fire because someone has broken a major cultural rule in your organization. Um, you can feel the pickup sure. immediately. immediately. The very next day, yep. you make the announcement, everybody's like, oh, okay, you know, they're Awkward. very cordial about mm -hmm. it, but the ones that are like, I was not wanting to come to the office because this wasn't being addressed, mm -hmm. now they're more engaged, now they're back. Now yeah. you can see the light in their, in their eyes, you can see the, the hunger again, because we are, emotional creatures mm -hmm. and we do let people affect us and as leaders we're the ones that have to even if we don't sniff it out if somebody else does we're the ones that have to control that That's right. and I think the leaders that we want to be are the ones that are more than happy to protect everyone else mm -hmm. from the one person no matter what their production is I really don't care how much it is no because I'd rather to be honest I'd rather if it's a lone person and you're on my team and you're a cancer, I'd rather you be out there marketing to yes. the same realtors in in your cancerous way yeah. and let our team come behind yeah. and uh, do it our way yeah. because we're going to have more success that way. Absolutely. Same. We're very, I think we run very similar businesses, yeah. very like-minded. And it's not always easy, right? We have to make tough decisions. We have to make decisions that affect you know when you trickle down to family members hundreds and hundreds of people and um, it's a lot of burden mm -hmm. I don't I, I, I didn't think that I would ever get to a point where you have to make decisions like that mm -hmm. whether they're going to be popular or not you're not always going to be everybody's favorite person um, but hopefully you've earned their trust to the point to where they will be able to see why you had to make that decision. Yes, and sometimes it, I have to tell people, trust me. Yeah. Trust me. I'll also tell them, like, look, I messed up. Yeah. So now i got to fix that. Yeah. And this is what that looks like. And it might not be pretty, but it's the answer. Mm -hmm. So we're going to all go through it. Yeah. Because this was a mis this is on me. I have no problem saying that. Mm -hmm. Like, that's on me, yeah. you know. Um, but we can't just stay that way because... I make a mistake. That's dumb. Right. That, that, how do we go forward if we just keep doing the same thing? Yeah, do it. Yeah. 
how to make a change. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. It's been great and just enjoy sharing and getting to know you better and how you run your company. Yeah, no, it, you know, it was, a. Uh, I was glad that you were able to accept the invitation and we've had a good time. Just our companies starting to learn each other and I look forward to continued partnership and hopefully we can do some more stuff like this because I think what can come out of this is powerful to, you know, we never know who might need it. So right, I appreciate it very much. Thank you. Of course.